We are excited to announce a new feature in the Ripple HVAC toolkit, Quick Loads, or CFM per square foot. Just like the name implies, this tool is going to quickly apply some quick rule of thumb load calculations and airflow calculations to each space. And this is important because not every model you get from an architect is going to be good enough to run loads on. And even if it is, sometimes you need to start getting equipment sizes before the model is ready for loads. For instance, if the architect is asking how big the mechanical room is before they even have windows placed, you obviously can't run loads. But you want to be able to give them a ballpark figure without spending a lot of time. And that's what the Quick Loads tool is for. With the Quick Loads tool, the data feeds right into the rest of the Ripple equipment selections. So you'll be able to select diffusers, VAVs, air handling units, chiller plants, and boiler plants. You could also use it with the easy button, and we'll show you that a little bit later. Okay, let's take a look at how this works. Okay, here we have the default Revit project uh, linked in. We don't have any spaces or anything else like that. So we're just gonna hit rooms to spaces, and this is going to pull in all of the architectural rooms and create a space, and then pull in the, the room name as well. And it's also gonna place uh, plenum spaces uh, we're not going to use that for quick loads, but it's good to have them in the model. So it's going to tell us it placed 90 new spaces, at about 51,000 square feet. And if we look at our uh, space load schedule, we'll see that we have all the room names pulled in, but we don't have any space type assigned yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here, we're going to assign occupancy categories. So this is going to go through, it's going to read the architectural room name and the area and try to parse out a ASHRAE 62.1 space type and apply that. So once it applies that, now all of our internal loads are set. So we've got our people loads based on the space type, we've got our lighting loads based on the space type, and we've got our power loads based on the space type. So a traditional workflow would be that an engineer would kind of go and take the total square footage of the building, apply a CFM per square foot, and start equ selecting equipment based on that. But since we can get occupancy categories and areas assigned so quickly, we can get a little bit more granular on how we assign CFM per square foot. So what the Quick Loads tool is going to do is it's going to take these internal loads and add a rule of thumb external envelope load factor based on the climate zone of the project. So depending on where you are in the country, it's going to adjust its, its rule of thumb um, assumptions. So we're gonna hit this. It's going to uh, go through the whole project, make the calculations, add up the internal loads, add this default exterior load factor, and it's gonna pop us up, gonna give us a pop up with what it did. So it applied 49,000, about 50,000 CFM to about 51,000 square feet, which is a little bit less than one CFM per square foot. But as we can see from the table here, it didn't apply these universally. So let's go ahead and tag these rooms. So we can kind of see what everything is here. So we can see the classrooms uh, went with a little bit less than one CFM per square foot. The conference rooms are a little bit higher. The cafeteria is a little bit higher than that. And the lobby is, is the highest after that. And this is because the occupancy density of these spaces gets a little bit higher and higher and higher. Now let's change the location of this project and see how it changes. So we'll go to manage location. So that was the default airflow for Fairbanks, Alaska, which is zone eight. Now let's go to Miami. And then we'll just run quick loads again. So now you can see it applied 85,000 CFM to 51,000 square feet. So more at 1.67 CFM a square foot. So again, you can see it's kind of the same, um, you know, as the occupancy density gets higher, you get a uh, higher airflow per square foot, but it's just overall higher because it's in a, it's in a diff different climate zone. Okay, so now that you know how that works, let's talk about the assumptions that are being made. So as I mentioned earlier, the internal loads are based off of 
the, the space types. And so you can view that in the schedule, but I pulled some, some of the assumptions out in a spreadsheet that we can look at. So when you install the Ripple HVAC toolkit, it's going to build all of these space types for you, and it's going to make some assumptions. Um, so for instance, a classroom, uh, it's going to take the occupancy density from 62.1, it's going to sum 275 BTU per person, 0.81 watts per square foot lighting load, 0.5 watts per square foot power load. And so that total internal load is going to come out to 14.09 BTU hours per square foot. So to cover that, it's going to need 0.69 CFM per square foot. Now, if the occupancy tool can't decide what the space type is, it's going to leave it undesigned or building. And in that case, these are the assumptions that are going to be made. And that's going to come out to 0.63 CFM per square foot. And so here are some common space types and what the internal load is. So lobbies have 150 people per thousand square feet. So the default internal load for that is 2 CFM a square foot. That's why we're seeing the lobby at the highest airflow density in our project, because that assumption is made by ASHRAE 62.1. Uh, now, if you don't like any of these assumptions, you can change them. I have, by default, a power load density of 0.25 watts per square foot and for lobbies. Now, that may make sense, it may not. Maybe you wanna assume there's no power load going on in these lobbies. So if you wanna change that, you go here, you go to manage, you go to MEP settings, you go to building space type settings, space type, let's look at lobbies. We have public semi spaces lobbies, 0 0.25. You could just change that to zero watts per square foot. And now your internal load will be changed when you run the, the quick loads tool. Um, if you change these settings on your template file, now, whenever anybody in your company starts a project from that template file, they'll have those default internal loads set correctly. So these are the internal loads, and these are going to be different from every, every space type. But what do we do about the external envelope loads? And so here are the rules of thumb that I'm applying to every space. So if you're in climate zone one, you're ap applying about 18 BTU hours per square foot. Uh, and that just for the external load, it takes about 0.9 CFM a square foot to uh, uh, cover that load. And it goes all the way down to 2.37 in Fairbanks, Alaska. So here are what your rule of thumb external load calculations are. So this is going to be added to the internal load to come up with your total, total rule of thumb load. Um, so just as a reference here, the climate zones, really Miami is the only one in one, and Alaska is mostly seven, except for Fairbanks is eight, and there's a couple other places that are eight. So what does it look like when we add all this stuff together? So same space types here. We've got our internal loads here, and then we've got the addition of all of the different loads for each climate zone. So uh, an unassigned just default building is going to go from 1.5 CFM per square foot in Miami down to 1 CFM a square foot in Boston down to 0.75 CFM a square foot in Alaska. Uh, and that's about what classrooms are. Uh, assembly, assembly spaces, lobbies are going to go from 3 to 2.5 to 2.25. And that's how that's what the default loads applied to the spaces are going to be. Now, from that, now that's for cooling load, and that's what you calculate your, your specified supply air CFM from. Now, for heating load, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, there's not a lot of good rule of thumb for heating loads, like cooling loads is CFM a square foot. You know, most engineers can think about that in their, in their head. But for heating loads, here are the assumptions we made for BTU hours per square foot. And the way I think about this is, if we have this load per square foot, what is the required discharge air temperature at 0.5 CFM a square foot that we would need to meet this load? So in Miami, we would need to discharge about 77 degrees. 
And all the way up in Fairbanks, Alaska, we need to discharge at about 105 degrees. So that gives you some idea of how much heat load this is. Um, now, if you want to keep your discharge air temperature under 90 degrees, you're, you're going to have to up the minimum uh, above five, and the, the VAV totally handles that for you. Uh, but this is the heating load assumptions. Um, so that is what's getting applied to all these, all these spaces as far as uh, the parameters go. If you would like to view the assumptions that Ripple is making uh, all together for all of the different space types, you could go here to help and you could download the quick loads assumption spreadsheet. And that will download a spreadsheet where it will go through every single ASHRAE 62.1 space type um, that the Ripple loads toolkit builds what the space temperature is, what the occupant density is, sensible heat gain per person, lighting load, power load, um, total internal load, and then all the CFMs per square foot. And then the external loads are on the, the second tab here. So you can view that at, at any time. And then if you wanna change these, you can change these and they can it'll recalculate the CFM a square foot. And then you could go in and you could change these values in the space type settings. Okay, so I mentioned before that all of these uh, all of these quick loads will feed into the air terminal selection tool, the VAV tool, the air handler tool, the chiller plant tool, and the boiler plant tool, and as well as the easy button. So if we want to use the easy button here, let's go to new project. We'll just use a blank template, so we're starting from scratch. We'll link in the architectural product project. And then so now when we hit the easy button, it's gonna give us the option to do just quick loads or actual heating and cooling loads. Uh, so we're gonna run quick loads uh, here. And so the good thing to note about this is that the easy button is gonna import the location of the project from the architectural model. So if the architect has that set correctly, which they normally do, it'll set the right external load factor and you'll get the right CFM for, per square foot. So this tool is gonna import all the content you need, all of the families, uh, all of the schedules, all of the space types, everything you need, and it's gonna run the, the tools in order. It's gonna do space types, uh, occupancy categories, quick loads, uh, zoning, and then all of the equipment. So this takes a little while to run. Um, I'm going to fast forward this part and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so there you have it. We've got all our views created. We've got diffusers laid out. We've got VAVs selected. Uh, we've got air handling units on the roof. Uh, we've got uh, shafts routed down through the building. We've got an uh, air-cooled chiller plant on the roof um, so that we could start coordinating uh, space requirements for all this equipment really quickly with the architect. Um, we've got a boiler plant down here on the first floor, so we could start carving out some mechanical room space for this. Um, we've got all of our schedules ready to go. We've got our uh, VAV schedule, you know, 30 or 40 VAVs picked with real coils, uh, real leaving water temperatures paired up with the boiler. Uh, we've got our air terminal schedule ready to go, ready to print. Um, everything's ready to go uh, with based on these uh, default quick loads. So sh should be very helpful um, for, for any model type. If you could get spaces in there, you can get some quick loads and get some quick equipment selections. Thanks.